Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back, one and all, to the Hoplite channel. And you are here to see a continuation in the series, Philosophy 101. Today's episode, the difference between success and failure. Right, okay, so we're back. We're doing Philosophy 101. Yet again, these will be shorter videos. I hope everyone's enjoying so far. I appreciate you watching the last video I did on reality. I uh, hope you found that uh, interesting and um, thought-provoking. So, yeah, um, I was uh, actually going through some old videos I had done in the Samurai Literature series. And I will get back to some Samurai Literature. I found um, a book I left out of that series that should have been included. Uh, but it's a series of different authors within the book. It's not just one author. So we'll just we'll break that into several parts. But that's for later. Um, but the quote I was thinking of um, was by Yagyu Munanori, and uh, his quote um, that um, Takawan Soho had also repeated in his teachings was, I do not know the way to defeat my enemy, only to defeat myself. And it's a very um, you know, Zen Buddhist way of saying, I don't necessarily know how to beat any particular enemy, however... The enemy that I see in the mirror is my most formidable one. And the enemy in the, in the mirror is who knows how to beat me best, right? You know your own weaknesses better than anyone else because you're most familiar with yourself uh, than anyone else would be. So what Yagi Munanoi was saying was that I don't know how to defeat anyone particularly uh, well. I just know how to defeat myself better. So if he ever loses, he understands that it's a reflection upon himself not being able to overcome an enemy, not necessarily the enemy overcoming him. It's kind of a roundabout way of getting to what a samurai's life boils down to and the, the understanding that one must have when they take upon the, the role of a bushi, of a warrior. But anyway, um, I did hit a little a multiple choice uh, question here for everyone. So when Yagi Munonori was saying that, what was he? What was he mostly speaking towards? What was what was his theme? And we're gonna we're gonna dive into that. So the question: the primary reason why some succeed while many fail is what? Is it talent or skill? So was Yagi Munonori talking about him not having the requisite talent or skill to defeat his enemy because he had not practiced enough? He was not naturally gifted in the katana. Or was he speaking about physical ability or intelligence? Was the primary reason that some succeed and some fail is because, well, some people just have a physical ability or an intelligence that puts them just high enough above the average person and that's why they succeed. Was he talking about personality, the ability to socialize, the ability of some people to interact better with the group and thereby become part of a series of networks of people that eventually get them to where they want to go. A samurai might not be concerned with that, but in considering Yagi Munonori being of the nobility class in Japan, having personality and being able to socialize in the upper class was essential. Uh, but was he talking about discipline or perseverance? Possibly. Or was he just saying, you know what, it's just luck and good timing. You could be the perfect samurai as, as it pertains to skill, physical ability, your intelligence, your ability to socialize and to um, curry the favor of the shogun and to be uh, respected and admired by your fellow samurai. But you know what, it doesn't matter because you just have to have good fortune smile upon you if you want to succeed. Everybody can do all of the above correctly, but... It just so happens that not everyone succeeds because not everybody has this window of good timing. So what do you think? I hope you're all thinking what I'm thinking. Right. So we know that it is discipline. Oh, I'll use the other side. <laughs> that one's too light. It is discipline. Right. So the reason people fail more often than not is because they don't have the requisite discipline to achieve what task they set out to do. Okay, now this is not to say that people fail uh, only because of a lack of discipline, because there's plenty of times where people fail because they just don't have the physical ability. Um, 
is a five foot two guy going to be able to dunk a basketball? Probably not. Mogsy Bogues did. If, if everyone's uh, you know uh, a fan of uh, '90s NBA basketball players, he was shorter than the average person, a lot shorter. But he was able to dunk a basketball. It was like crazy to watch. But the average person probably doesn't have the physical ability, no matter how hard they try, to dunk a basketball. But they could probably get close. They could probably get a lot closer than they think if they just have the discipline to apply themselves to that skill, which would be basketball and dunking a basketball. Um, as a personal anecdote, um, a previous employer of mine um, required physical fitness tests um, every three months, every, every, uh, every quarter. And in those physical fitness tests, there were uh, four different uh, evaluations. There was sit-ups in a minute, push-ups in a minute, max pull-ups, and a one and a half mile run. Okay. I can do sit-ups all the live long day. I don't know why I just can. I can do push-ups maybe half of the live long day. I'm going to get wore out eventually. I can actually, believe it or not, run a mile and a half in under mm, 11 minutes. I used to do it under 10 when I was a, a, a younger lad, but I can do it under 11 still. Uh, and I'd probably be able to do that for a while, and I'll probably be able to run it under 12, you know, in the next 10 years. So I'm decently fast for um, my age and my weight, but pull-ups was my Achilles heel. For whatever reason, the strength I had doing push-ups did not translate to pull-ups. And there are a lot of people in this world who can't do one pull-up. I could do six or seven just by training regularly, but I wasn't really satisfied with that. I mean, to get a perfect score on this test, you had to do 10. You had to do 10 dead hang pull-ups, which means you hang down, you take your extension all the way out. You don't, you know, you're not like this, you're out like this, and you bring your chin and get it up over that bar 10 times without touching the ground or getting any assistance. And I found this really difficult because I could train and get six or seven and then I would get maybe eight or nine, but getting that 10th pull up, it's, it felt like it was um, a mile away. Like getting the eighth or nine pull up was difficult, but that getting that 10th regularly for me was, was, was tough. And I had friends who could bang out 15, 16, 20 pull ups and they were good to go. I would beat them on the run, which was weird, but they could just bang out pull-ups like it was nobody, nobody's business. Now I'm six foot three right now, 235, and I knew I had to do two things if I wanted to get those 10 pull-ups. I had to drop weight, as in lose body fat, because, shocking, this is gonna maybe um, blow you people away if you're not aware, but body fat does not help you get your chin up over a pull-up bar. I know, I didn't, I didn't understand this either. I think, well, body fat keeps me warm and uh, it's gotta have other uses, right? No, it's dead weight. When you're pulling your chin up over a bar, every ounce of body fat is one more ounce that is keeping you from getting up there faster. So you wanna lose body weight and you also want to just do repetitions. And that's the secret. You lose body weight, dead body, dead fat, but, uh, fat which is dead weight, and you put on positive weight. You don't want to put on too much body mass because you know, if you put weight in your legs and in your trunk, that's also not going to help you over the bar. It's all coming from your lats, from your biceps and your traps and your pecs. But it's repetitions. It's losing body weight. How do I get there? How do I do it? I've got to have discipline. I've got to persevere and I just got to get that weight off of my belly and I've got to get more weight up above that bar by doing repetitions. And that was all it came down to. And eventually I did get uh, 10 pull-ups. I don't know if I could still do 10. I could probably get close, but it was tough. And I, I have no shame in admitting it. I could do 50 push-ups in a minute. I could do 50 sit-ups in a minute, but getting those pull-ups was tough, but it just came down to discipline. And if I had just decided, you know what, eight or nine is good enough, I don't have to get 10, well, then I would never would have got there. It was the discipline of me going into the gym and getting my chin up over that bar enough times where every time I hopped on the bar fresh, I felt like I could bang out 10 pull-ups. And that's all there is to it, folks. Uh, 
That's, that, I mean, that shouldn't, shouldn't really come as a big surprise to everybody. I wonder what he's going to say. He's going to say talent and skill or, you know, physical ability. It's discipline. Discipline is everything. Uh, discipline is what keeps you alive. And I know that sounds like kind of extreme, but it's true, right? It's, it's self-taught discipline that will carry you through life. A lot of people have to go into the military and they have to have some drill sergeant, you know, jamming the brim of their hat in their nose and screaming at them, telling them to get their ass out of bed, to stop eating so much and to work out more and to shine their shoes and to make sure their collar and their shirt is on straight, to make sure their hat isn't crooked, to make sure they're clean shaven. They need people to get down on them to make them build themselves up. The reason, and I'm going, I'll probably have an episode why I wanted to call this channel the Hoplite channel in the first place is because it's all on you. When, when no one's looking and when people are done with you, as far as what their role was in your life, it's going to be on you. So you could go into the military, you could learn all this discipline, but you could never absorb it unless you choose to, unless it becomes a way of life for you. And success is a way of life for many people and they've only gotten there through personal self-imposed discipline. And let's read the definition, right? Discipline, noun, training that makes people more willing to obey or more able to control themselves, often in the form of rules and punishments if these are broken or the behavior produced by this training. Okay, that's the Oxford uh, English Dictionary. Um, so it's not as easily uh, digestible for us Americans. But yeah, it is training that makes you more willing to obey or more able to control yourself. Who are you obeying? Well, in some people's case, it's a drill instructor. In other people's case, it's just their own will. It's their own conscience. As in, I will do 10 pull-ups. I will eat less so I get body fat reduced. I will go to the gym every day and do pull-ups until I get 10 on a regular basis. I will continue to do this until I am confident that I could do this all the time, every time. That is discipline, right? Some people, they just can't be helped and will never learn discipline. And these are, the, these are the failures in life. And you know these people. Sometimes they wear it on their face. Hi, I'm a failure. I have no discipline. I smoke cigarettes. I eat greasy food. Yes, my doctor told me I should give it up if I want to live longer. I tried. I failed. I still eat greasy food. I still smoke cigarettes. I'm a couch potato. Uh, nice to meet you. And some people are just perfectly fine being failures like that. But it's when they complain about this failure that no one should give them the time of day because it's just from lack of discipline. They have all of the same tools that you have up here. It's just the willpower. It's the, it's the discipline that they have not adopted for themselves that is lacking. That is all there is to it. If people are overweight, if people are in bad health, sometimes that's a matter of genetics. Sometimes it's a matter of environment. But more often than not, it's self-imposed. And this is where stoicism came into my life in a big way, in that no one is feeling sorry for you but you. Nobody cares about you but you. Only you care about you. Understand this. So you could sit there and feel sorry for yourself. You could mope. You could blame everything under the sun. Oh, I didn't get the job because, um, you know, my boss is racist. Or... You know, I didn't make the team because, you know, the coach is sexist or uh, I didn't uh, I didn't uh, get a date with the good looking girl uh, because she's a heightist. She don't she only dates uh, guys who are six feet tall or above, which is somewhat true. But if you have discipline, if, if you persevere, that's not going to stop you. The people who succeed are the ones who have the discipline to never take no for an answer from themselves and to put their head down and persevere. People don't necessarily succeed because they have discipline. But I can bet you almost 99% of the time, those who failed lack discipline. Okay? So this is vital. You need these in some things you choose to do. But this you need no matter what. And that's all there is to it. It's discipline. It is telling yourself you're going to achieve a goal and not letting yourself fail to obey that rule which is perseverance. That's discipline. Uh, discipline will keep you alive. Discipline will make you stronger. Discipline will make you a better person.
you have to respect when you when you see somebody who is disciplined, right? Let's say you see someone who is a, in a in a orchestra and they play a cello, and they're and they're brilliant. Every single stroke of the bow is is just perfection, and the music is beautiful. They got there because they became devoted to their instrument and were disciplined, disciplined in learning and disciplined in practicing. And I think there's a the famous quote. I I, I got to look it up now because I don't know who said it, but Perfection is not doing something right one time. It is doing something right so often that you could not possibly get it wrong. And the way to reach that perfection is through the discipline of teaching yourself to do something right and repeating it over and over and over and over again. And that's it. So now I'll read some quotes, some inspirational quotes as they were. Uh, that reflect this idea of discipline being the uh, the difference, the the linchpin that holds people to their success. And if you don't maintain that discipline, failure is probably not far behind. Because if that was the only thing keeping you there, if you had no other, none of the other uh, attributes going for you but discipline, then you need to cling to that. And here are some quotes uh, that help illustrate that. Bruce Lee, okay, Kung Fu master. Jeet Kune Do developed his own art as a branch from Kung Fu. He said, I don't fear the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks. I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. So just like that other quote I was trying to uh, remember, um, yeah, it, that is perfection. He doesn't fear the guy who's practiced a thousand different kicks, right? That, that guy is just going in the gym and he's having fun. He's just hitting a bag. The guy who has practiced one kick 10,000 times is the man you should fear. Why? Because you can guarantee that if you're in a conflict with that guy and he throws that kick at you, it is going to come fast and hard. And if you don't get out of the way or parry it, it's probably going to put you on your back. He has practiced that kick so many times that it, when it lands, it's going to land with authority because he has done it so often. And if he does it right, when he throws it, he knows it's going to land. If I practice 10,000 kicks, maybe one or two might land, but I haven't practiced them to the point of perfection. I haven't practiced one kick 10,000 times where it is a certainty. All right, move on to the next uh, quote by Calvin Coolidge, one of the coolest party animal presidents we ever had. President Coolidge said, Nothing in this world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. That's a good one, yeah. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. That's 100% true, right? Like, How many people do you know are brilliant? but they don't apply themselves. How many people do you know are skilled, but they just don't have the uh, motivation to get out of bed in the morning? These people are everywhere. They're failures. Despite their natural talents, they're failures because they don't apply themselves. Robert De Niro's character in A Bronx Tale said, there's nothing more tragic in this world than wasted talent. Uh, that's 100% true as well. If you have this talent, if you have this ability, but you lack the discipline to put it to a good use, that's tragic. Because you were gifted with this, but you just don't have the personal responsibility to take it upon yourself to put that practice, that skill, that talent to good use. Okay, next quote. Another president, George Washington. I think he was the first, right? He said, discipline is the soul of an army. It makes small numbers formidable, procures success to the weak, and esteem to all. Okay, so George Washington, right? A contemporary of Karl von Clausewitz. Um, although the two men most likely didn't know each other, they were around and leading armies uh, in the same era, right? This would have been the Napoleonic era, except George Washington was uh, leading the Continental Army against uh, the British uh, empire, and von Clausewitz was uh, fighting for the Prussian army against Napoleon. Formidable numbers are made from the small through discipline. 
That's true. Think about, uh, everyone knows the movie, but the story of the 300 Spartans at Thermopylae. Spartans became famous throughout the world and down through history because of their military discipline and nothing more. There was nothing physically imposing about them. There was nothing uh, supernatural about these people except their insane will and dedication to military discipline. So much so that 300 Spartans, as the story goes, were able to hold off tens of thousands of Persians that were trying to invade Greece through the hot gates of Thermopylae. It was their discipline, their military tradition of not breaking rank, of following orders, and doing what they had to do despite men possibly dying all around them. It was their discipline that held their 300 together. And that's, that's what that story is about. There's no, other, there's no other theme that needs to be considered. The Spartans were famous, and that battle is particularly famous because Leonidas and his 300 demonstrated possibly better than any other example in history what military discipline looks like, and George Washington uh, echoed the same. Okay, and finally, a quote by the Buddha. The Buddha said, To enjoy good health, to bring true happiness to one's family, to bring peace to all, one must first discipline and control one's mind. If a man can control his mind, he can find the way to enlightenment, and all wisdom and virtue will naturally come to him. Okay, what's the Buddha saying? Discipline and control of your mind is the path to enlightenment. He pretty much solved the puzzle right there. How do I achieve enlightenment and thereby achieve, uh, achieve happiness? Well, you have to discipline your mind and control it. So he's essentially telling you that stoicism in the Buddhist tradition is the, is the path to happiness. And that's what a stoic would tell you, is that the control of your mind to control your fears, your anger, your lust, uh, your hate, your love, all of those emotions have their place. But you can never let them take over and dictate where your mind will go. The control of your mind, the discipline that you have over this most important uh, product of um, evolution, you know, the human mind, this is all that is necessary for you to succeed and fail. But you must master your own mind. You must master and discipline yourself to always be able to recall your mind back to itself. You must always be able to say to yourself, I could be carried away by certain passions, but I will never let them drive me to a life of uh, anger or a life of lust or a life of revenge. Things that will ultimately become vices will ruin me because I lack the discipline to call myself back to myself, center my mind, and regain control. And it's all through discipline. That is success, in my opinion. Okay, cool. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, installment for Fluffy 101. Um, yep, the difference between success and failure in all things, regardless of how small or great they may be, is your commitment to disciplining yourself to achieving that end. If you have the discipline to teach yourself or to be taught, you will get to where you're going, most likely. Not guaranteed, but without it, you will never get there. And that's the lesson. Okay, cool. All right, if you're liking this, give it a thumbs up. Uh, share it with family and friends. Uh, I'll do another Philosophy 101 here uh, in the near future. And yeah, it'll just be a random topic that comes to mind. So I hope to see you all back uh, for that next episode. Till then, take care.